In this edition of Tech It Out, immunity to COVID-19, we talked about a vaccine that's in a race against time. Ready for liftoff, China's first Mars exploration mission prepares for its July launch. And we mark the Hubble Space Telescope 30th birthday with a treat in the Milky Way. Well, since 2003, the world has faced three outbreaks caused by the coronavirus family. But a vaccine was absent during the outbreak of SARS and MERS, and very likely this time too. But it's not all bad news. What many people don't realize is that over the past 17 years, the time it takes to develop a vaccine has drastically shortened. Vaccines usually carry inactive disease-causing proteins made by virus. This works by mimicking how a virus infects your body. They stimulate the body's immune response and create antibodies. This primes the body to respond more rapidly and effectively if exposed to the infectious agent in the future. In the case of the coronavirus, this protein are those spikes, which look like crowns. The spike protein works as door opener, allowing the virus to get inside and infect the cell. A vaccine for coronavirus will copy what those spike proteins do to prompt the immune system, but it does so in a safer way. Viruses that are inactive or made weaker can work as vaccines. Firstly, scientists isolate and acquire the actual coronavirus. This step has been done by scientists already. The virus is then cultivated in the lab using chicken eggs or other mammalian cell. Then it's developed it into a less threatening version. In recent years, a new method has emerged called RNA vaccines. It takes advantage of the way cells make proteins. A cell will use its genetic material, the DNA, as the template to make messenger RNA. This RNA will give out orders to build proteins in the cell. So, a RNA vaccine consists of a messenger RNA strand that coded for virus proteins instead of normal proteins. Once it's delivered into your body, the cell will use genetic information of the virus to produce foreign protein, causing immune reactions. A major advantage of the RNA vaccine is that as soon as we know the entire genetic code of the coronavirus, which we did in the beginning of January, RNA can be produced in a lab using readily available materials. It's less expensive and way faster than conventional methods. In fact, a team from China just announced that they have started to test their RNA vaccine on rats less than two months since the start of the outbreak. Not only this, but RNA does not integrate itself into the host genome and is degraded once the protein is made. So theoretically, it's safer. Of course, it's not perfect. It may cause an unintended immune reaction. Delivery is another challenge because free RNAs in the body are quickly broken down. The vaccine needs to be frozen during transport as well as storage. And no matter how rapid the timeline is for vaccine development, animal testing and clinical trials are still rate-limiting steps. And even if time can be squeezed, mass-producing vaccines quickly is another huge challenge. Those shots weren't ready in time in the last 17 years. Research on SARS and MERS vaccines has allowed scientists to be better prepared than ever. Some experts believe that because different types of coronavirus can share similarities, a universal vaccine could theoretically be developed. Given we have been hit three times during the past two decades, we can only hope for such a result. Welcome to Science Saturday. I'm Kasturi Manikam. Coming up, China's first Mars mission and glow-in-the-dark plants. China has named its first Mars exploration mission after an ancient poem by Chu Yin. 
It is called 1011, which means quest for heavenly truth. The probe will study the soil, geological structure, environment and atmosphere of the red planet. It's expected to launch in July this year. SpaceX has launched its seventh batch of communications satellites. Its Falcon 9 rocket carried 60 Starlink satellites, releasing them at an altitude of 224 kilometers above the Earth. SpaceX has 422 satellites in orbit. The company plans to have up to 12,000 satellites to provide uninterrupted high-speed internet access from any point on Earth. Hubble has revealed a stunning image of a cosmic reef to mark its 30th anniversary. The image shows a giant nebula, NGC 2014, and its neighbour, NGC 2020. It's been nicknamed the Cosmic Reef as it looks like an undersea world. The vast star-forming region is close to the Milky Way, located some 163,000 light-years away. Each year, Hubble takes a new photo to share with the world to celebrate its birthday. Scientists have created glowing plants using mushroom genes. They inserted DNA sequences from a bioluminescent mushroom into tobacco plants. This made the plants radiate a mysterious green gleam. The gene encoding method can help make a plant grow 10 times brighter compared with the traditional means of using DNA of glowing bacteria. Experts say the results can help them better observe and understand the inner workings of plants. Well, that's all for today. If you have any comments, please let us know and stay in touch with us on our website and social media platform. This is CGTN. Check it out. See you next time.